Okay, you guys ready? I'm chomping at the bit to get to this. So here we go. So grab your Bible, going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we're going to continue our series, and we're going to continue on the theme that Lee so wonderfully led us last week about the day of the Lord, the coming of Jesus. So Paul talks about these things to them and also to us. And after Easter, we're going to jump back into 2 Thessalonians, where Paul addresses the, the Antichrist, the person of rebellion, and also addresses the judgment of God. So we're going to look at that in 2 Thessalonians. But today, we're focusing in on the day of the Lord, what Scripture tells us, what we can learn from it. And over the course of human history, there's been great interest in the end of the world and what's going to come. Because we as humans are curious and we as humans are afraid of things we don't know. Now, if you want to sell a lot of books or get a lot of YouTube videos, tell people what's going to happen. Tell people when the end's going to come. Right? Even if you write fictional books about those being left behind, right? Remember those books? It seems like every garage sale I go to, there's a set of left behind books, right? We all love this stuff. We want to know about the end. And I've been asked many, 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 many times, will you preach about the end of the world? Will you preach on the book of Revelation, right? So we are curious about this. I remember when I was a kid, back in the late 70s, early 80s, a movie called A Thief in the Night. Anyone remember this movie? Some of you old timers, right, you remember this? I've watched these movies and it freaked me out, right? It was about the movies that, you know, here I was like seven, eight, nine, ten years old watching these movies and these people just being, you know, raptured and those being left behind. I was freaked, like I was going to miss the rapture, okay, those of you growing up like that. And so, so I went to a Christian school at that time and one of my friends, literally, he knew that the parents were going to be gone early in the morning and so he set out their pajamas on their bed and he put, yeah, you know what's going on, put his pajamas on his bed and went and hid on the ba- in the basement. So when his siblings woke up, they freaked out. They cried for like an hour, and now over years of therapy, I think they're okay, right? (laughs) So these things happen, and we want to know about the end and what is going to happen. And Jesus says he's going to come. When he's going to come, what's going to happen? And these are good questions for us to ask. But I do not want you to be uninformed, and nor do I want you to be afraid. Because God has told us some things that will help us. So today we're going to talk about you can be aware. Number two, that you and I can be prepared. And I want you to be secure in your salvation and also that we will encourage and build each other up. And that we do not have to live in Fear, and you can say amen right there, okay? We don't have to live in fear. So God in his graciousness said, hey, I want you to know some things, and by knowing these things, I want you to con- encourage each other. And we saw that last week, encourage each other, encourage each other, because these things will happen. Okay, so let's go down then to our scripture, and here's the first point. Be aware of what is to come. Be aware of what is to come. And there, we're going to see in this passage there's two groups of people. Some who will not be aware and others who will be aware. So I'm telling us to be aware. So here we are, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting with verse 1. Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. There's that title of that movie, right? Now, while people are saying there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. And they will not escape. Okay, let's pause there. So the day of the Lord will come suddenly, swiftly, and unexpectedly to those in which that day means destruction upon them. Okay? These are unbelievers, those living in darkness. They will not be 
aware. And the day of the Lord is not coming through crisis, okay? People say, well, Jesus is coming because Hitler came on the scene. No, it's not going to come through a war. It's not going to go, uh, come during a time of calamity. It's not going to be coming during even a time of pandemic, okay? Why can I say that so strongly? Because it will come when, while people are saying there is peace and security. We often think about, well, you know, World War III, that's when it's going to come. World War IV, you know, then the end will come. The truth is that Jesus will come back when there is peace and security. Okay? Get that. People have got this wrong forever because they didn't read this word. It will come when there is peace and security. They say there's peace, there's security, finally, and then suddenly destruction will come upon us, okay? And check this out. And they will not escape. There is no bunker deep enough. There's no lawyer smart enough. There's no bank account big enough to escape the day of the Lord, it is coming, and those who want to flee from Jesus coming back will not be able to flee. God is everywhere. He knows everything, and he and no one is beyond his reach or scope. Okay? There will be no escape, and people try to hedge their bets, and people try to build their bunkers, and they try to make their walls bigger so they can protect themselves. No one's going to miss when Jesus comes back, okay? You say amen to that. And so there is, he, when he comes, the day of the Lord, and we know the last passage, we looked at it last week, the trumpet call of God, Jesus is coming, those who are dead in him are coming with him, those who are still alive on this earth will meet the Lord in the air, and this is going to happen, and no one is going to miss it, okay? That day is coming. And those who are living in darkness, those who do not believe, those who are just going about their business, they'll be caught completely off guard. They think that now it's good, and now we're all holding hands, and everyone's getting along. It's a false security. So what about believers? What about those living in the life? So Paul addresses this first group saying that to them, it's going to come like a thief in the night. Now he continues with verse 4, and you have to catch that. But you, believers, right? He was writing to the church. But you are not in darkness, brothers and sisters, for that day to surprise you like a thief, okay? That's good news, right? So first he says that non-believers, those living in darkness, well, it'll come upon you, them, with, with suddenly. He says, but not you, right? It won't surprise you like a thief, for you are children of light, children of day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness, okay? So I grew up believing that, you know, it'll happen, and I, I gotta look, right? Now, should we be ready? The answer is yes, right? But should we be aware? Yes, I want you to be aware. I don't want to hear any of you are in a bunker or you ran up your credit card and you're sitting outside in rapture practice waiting for Jesus to come, okay? We used to do that. We thought it was funny. Rapture practice and we jump, right? You didn't have quite the childhood like I had, okay? Right? <laughs> so believers will not be surprised when the day of the Lord comes. We will know it is coming, the times and seasons even though we will not know the day and hour, okay? So if you hear someone say in 2000, let's pick a date, 2047, uh, and Wednesday, March 17th, Jesus will come back at three, between three and five, don't believe it, right? You guys have been living long enough to hear people say, well, Jesus is coming back in 1980, Jesus is coming back in 1988, Jesus is coming back in 1999, Jesus is coming back in 2000. Stop listening to that junk. I didn't get an amen right there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you guys like when I listen to that. Okay. Don't buy the book. 
don't believe it. Dave, why do you say that? Well, because something that Jesus said, okay? You guys, you guys know Jesus, right? Yeah. You believe him? You need to believe him, right? This is what he said. This is Matthew 24. It says, from the fig tree, using an example, learn its lesson. As soon as a branch becomes tender, it puts out its leaves. Okay, there's a season. You know that summer's near. So also, when you see all these things, and you can go and read them, Matthew chapter 24, go and read it. You know that he is near, okay, at the very gates. A little later on in 36, but he says, But concerning that day, an hour no one knows, okay? Highlight it. Underline it. Don't believe the people who are giving dates and times, okay? They got it wrong. No one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. The person who knows that exact moment is God the Father himself and no one else. So if someone claims they know, they are a liar, okay? Do not believe them. Do not follow them, okay? But you'll know something. You'll know seasons, and I want you to know your scripture, okay? I'm not going to go through all of Matthew 24, okay? I'm not going to go through other passages. Read them, and we're going to read some more when we continue on in 2 Thessalonians, okay? So we'll know a season. We'll know that, that God is up to something, and we know that we're getting closer, and we are getting closer moment by moment, Okay, event by event, there's going to be wars, there's going to be rumors of wars, there's going to be famines, there's going to be pestilences, there's going to be pandemics, there'll be these things. These are just birth pains, right? Leading up, will these things increase? Yes, okay? So we have to be prepared. So I want you to be aware of what is to come. Be aware, it's going to happen, and when Jesus says it's going to happen, we know. And we have to be living as people of the light. We have to be living as people who are aware. So second, this is the second thing. Be prepared for what is to come. So number one, be aware, okay? It's coming like a thief with a knife. We're going to know the season, and he is coming back. Number two, be prepared for what is to come. So he continues on speaking to us who are believers. This is 1 Thessalonians 5, starting with verse 6. So then, let us not sleep, okay? So he's contrasting those who are in the dark against those who are in the light. He says, now we're in the light. So let us not sleep as others do. <coughs> Excuse me. But let us keep awake and sober. <coughs> Excuse me. Someone can give me some water. That would be super great. I, I drained mine. <clears throat> For those who are uh, asleep, <clears throat> sleep at night. For those who are drunk, get drunk at night. See the contrast. Thank you. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, For, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Salvation. Oh, look at the hope of salvation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Bob. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. So he's making us <clears throat> aware. And he's saying, okay, now be prepared. Don't fall asleep on us. Okay? Don't just say, well, you know, it's not going to happen. And hey, you know, Jesus, come back. And I'm just going to chill out for a while. Forget that noise. All right? Let us keep away. That means active. That means evolved. And let us not be given over to things that will take over our will. Okay? That's what's meant by and be sober. Right? Oh, the water is coming in from various places. <laughs> oh, you are very, very kind to me. Thank you. Thank you for this. I have reinforcements. This is great. Okay. So we have to be active and awake. Continue to live and walk in the light. Okay, so what does that mean, living and walking in the light? Okay, two quick passages for us. John chapter 12, verse 35 and 36. Jesus talking again. He says, the light is among you for a little while longer. Talking of himself. Walk while you have the light. Okay? Walk in this light and the knowledge of who Christ is and who he is to us and the world. Lest darkness overtake you. 
The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. They don't understand what's happening. They don't understand where they're going, okay? Have you ever walked around in a dark room before, okay? Without seeing, it's dangerous, right? I've run into plenty of things, right? I've got lost during the night in various places. It is scary. He says, listen. The one who walks in darkness doesn't know where he's going, okay? While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. The part of us being aware is believing in Christ, all right? This is what we're prepared. He's the light of the world, and we are to walk in the light. We need to follow after him, and we need to live as believers and believing Christ. Second, here's another passage. This is John the Apostle who wrote the Gospel of John in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and the book of Revelation. He says this in 1st John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he, Christ, is in the light, what happens? We have fellowship with one another, okay? And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So us being in Christ, we are walking as Christ did. Being a Christian means that you're a person who follows the Christ, okay? Being a Christian doesn't mean you're a person who has a Christian bumper sticker on your car, okay? Being a Christian doesn't mean that you have a cross point face mask, okay? Being a Christian means that you follow after Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. You guys are getting there, okay? Amen, all right? We follow after Jesus. That means that we are a Christian. Nothing else. Right? Not even while I attend church that makes me a Christian. Okay? While I've eaten and slept in my garage, does that make me a car? It does not. It's belief. Right? Belief being the light and then follow after Christ. And then, while we're in this light, we fellowship with one another. And we're going to talk about that next week. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So keep awake. Be active in your faith. Do what God has called you to do. Okay? Do you know that you're called by God to do some things? You are all called by Him to represent him in this world. The minister is not the person behind this microphone. You're the ministers. My job is to equip you, to shepherd you. You and I all have to give account of ourselves, the giftings, the callings. Do those things. Don't sit and just look into the sky. We look to the sky and we say, come Lord Jesus, and then we get after it. Christianity is not a spectator sport. You are called to be involved. And you will give an account, and so will I. Okay? Be involved. How can I connect? How can I walk in the light? How can I represent you? But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Okay? So this is tied to the spiritual armor that we read about in Galatians chapter 6. Okay? Breastplate of faith and love. Okay? So we walk around in these things, and I have my, my little garment here, right? This is something that we put on. And so as we are walking in the light, that we put these things on. These things, faith and love, it protects us. Okay. And we put on the hope of salvation. Okay. Best I can do, people. It's the best I can do. Okay? You probably remember this. You probably forget everything else, okay? <laughs> Hope of salvation, right? Protects me, but it also reflects me. Right? We put these things on. We, we're walking in this. Okay, you're in the light, but there are enemies coming after you, okay? So we have to walk in faith, right? 
Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in your promises. I believe what you said is true. I believe that we are sinful people. I believe that your blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God, I believe that you're coming back again. I walk in faith and express my faith for living for the kingdom. So therefore, I contribute. Therefore, I give. Therefore, I pray. Therefore, I sing praises to you. I walk in faith. And walking in this faith protects us, but it also reflects us. And then we walk in love, and right? And remember, Paul's been talking about this. He's saying, hey, your faith is strong and your love overflows, okay? So if we are walking within faith, if we're walking within love, okay, we are protected, but we're also reflecting Christ. And we are protected from the rays, all right? And we're protected, and this isn't quite a helmet, but best I have. Okay, the hope of salvation. Well, isn't it the helmet of salvation, why does it say the hope of salvation? The deal about salvation is you're already saved, but you're not yet saved, right? This afternoon, I am going on an airplane. I have a ticket. Do, am, I, am I already where I'm supposed to be? No. But do I have assurance that I'm going to get there? Yes, all right? So I know that I'm going to be on the plane, but I'm not quite yet there, right? We have a seal of salvation because Jesus seals us with his Holy Spirit. It says, that one's mine. That one's mine. That one's mine. Right? So we're already walking in salvation, but the full revelation of that salvation will not appear until we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Then there's no more hope we have it. But your ticket has been paid for by the blood of Christ. And it covers us. And it keeps our mind focused. Right? You ever have problems with your thoughts? Anybody? 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 I do. It helps me to think like Christ. It helps me to reflect like Christ. And he says, hey, put these things on, having the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of salvation. It protects us and it reflects us. So this is what we are to put on every day. And the light of it, that day, we put this on every day. day. God, today I'm choosing to walk in faith of what you say and who you are. Today, God, I'm choosing to walk in love. Today, I am walking and knowing that your word is true and there will be salvation for me. So, number one, be aware of what is to come. Number two, be prepared. Be following Christ. Be walking in faith. Be walking in love. This will prepare us. Stay awake. Now, thirdly, now he tells, and he's telling these folks, because they were a little concerned, right? Because they had been told in Thessalonica that the day of the Lord already came, and they were like freaking out a little bit. Like, it hasn't come yet. No one will escape it. It's coming. You'll be aware. Those, um, some people will be unaware, but you'll be aware. So be prepared. And then thirdly, be secure in your salvation. Be secure. Here we go. First Thessalonians, let's continue with verse 9. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. That's good news, okay? For those who believe, God has not destined for wrath. Wrath. So how do you know if you are not destined for wrath? Because you believe. Okay? Simple logic. Wrath and destruction that comes from it is not, uh, will not come upon those who are in Jesus Christ. Okay? The perfection of Jesus Christ received by grace through faith is the only thing that will save us from the wrath of God. His blood. Right? We see it in the Old Testament. We see it in the Passover. We see it in the sacrifice systems, sacrificial system. 
And finally we see it in Christ where the angel of death passes over because the blood of the Lamb has been applied to our life. And we receive forgiveness. That is the only thing that will save us from the wrath of God. God saves us for himself. God saves us by himself. God saves us from himself. This is the love of God seen in Jesus Christ. God has not destined us for wrath. Obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ who died for us whether we are awake or asleep. The day of the Lord will bring both destruction and deliverance. To those outside the faith, there will be destruction. But from those within, there will be salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that we might live with him. And don't you like that last line? who died for us, uh, whether we are awake or asleep, that is, we're we're, we're dead already or we're in Christ here, we might live with him. When When Jesus promises something, he will keep his promise. When it's your turn to die, when it's my turn to die, you do not have to be afraid. And not because you're a good person. It's because Jesus' perfection and his grace apply to us. That we say, I believe in him. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? Some of you are really good, but none of you are God good, okay? None of you. All of us. And so all of us deserve judgment because we're lawbreakers and God is just. And because he is just, he has to declare us guilty. Because if he did not, we, he would not be just any longer. So God's justice declares us guilty. But God's grace and his love declares us forgiven because he takes the punishment due us, placed it upon Christ, the perfect one. And then if we are in here, in him, we are now declared righteous. So your salvation is not dependent upon your goodness, but upon God's grace. Say amen. By grace we've been saved through faith. Not of our own doing, it's a gift of God. So I want you to be secure in your salvation. And trust God when he says, if you're in me, you're going to live with me. Amen. Okay? Amen. You don't have to be scared of death. You don't have to be scared of the day of the Lord. And will it be awesome? Absolutely. Okay? And will we behold it? We will, friends. I want you to be in him. You have an invitation to be in him. And you can be secure in your salvation. Last point. Now, be encouraging one another. This present tense, this is ongoing. Be encouraging one another. So he tells us all of these things. Be aware, be prepared, be secure. Now, be encouraging one another. Therefore, verse 11, encourage one another and build one another just as you are doing. Why should we be encouraging? Because there's things in this world that are discouraging, right? Come on, we say amen, right? We need to encourage one another, right? This is why God gives us one another. Let's encourage one another. Why? Because there's things that are discouraging. Why should we build one another up? Because there's things in the world that tear us down, right? All the time. So we are to be, when we gather together, when we connect, encouraging one another. We are to be building one another up. So the question is, how do we encourage one another? How do we build one another up? By reminding each other that the day of the Lord is coming. That it won't always be like this. There 
will be a day in which justice is done. There will be a day there will be righteous reward. There will be a day that God will make all things new. There will be a day where the whole world will see the glory of God and His Son, Jesus Christ. It's not going to be this way forever, right? Well, I'm suffering. Yes, you are. But we will weep with you. God may deliver you now, but he will always deliver you. And if you suffer, the good news is, it's only for a lifetime. Let that sink in. Our life is so much shorter than eternity. His promise is so much greater than anything that you can face here. He never promises us that there won't be difficulty. The exact opposite is true, he says. Those who are in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Those in this life will face difficulty. Don't Be angry at God for a promise he never gave you. He promises to be with you. He promises to rescue us in the end. He promises that we'll live for him forever. He promises to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, but he never says that you will not face difficulties. On the contrary, he says you will. But I will be with you even to the ends of the world. Not always going to be like this. Is it hard? Yeah. Does your body hurt? Absolutely. Are there governments that shoot their citizens? Unjustly, there are. Is there oppression? There is. But not forever. When the great King of Kings comes back, an awesome sight. You read about it in the book of Revelation. This glorious king. Right? He came first as Savior. Next time he's coming back as Lord, friends. You better buckle up. King of kings, Lord of the lords. Fire in his eyes. Salvation in his hand. He will make all things new. Encourage one another with these words. So if you're feeling discouraged, fix your eyes on Jesus, right? The author and finisher of our hope, who the joy set before him endured the cross, right? Remember this? Jesus himself, while he was suffering, He looked to the joy that came before him, and therefore he was encouraged. Therefore, it gave him strength to endure. So endure, so endure, so endure, so endure. How do we endure? By focusing in on encouraging each other what's to come, friends. That's good news. That's how God encourages us in Christ. And we're going to have the worship team come up, and we're coming in for a landing. So from this passage, connected to the passage from last week, Paul will continue to talk about these things and we'll look at them in 2 Thessalonians as well. Next week, we're going to talk about leadership. We're going to talk about fellowship. We're going to talk about the following week, worship. But I want you to be encouraged, okay? I'm going to pray for us. Right? I want you to be aware of what is to come. Be prepared for what is to come. Be secure in your salvation and courage. Build each other up. And you do not have to be afraid of the day of the Lord. But we can speed its coming right? by declaring the gospel to the nations. Through declaring the gospel to your neighbor. Speed is coming. So God, here we are this day. What a glorious thing to join together here in this building, here online, to come around you, Christ, by your Spirit, to listen to your word. God, we heard worship from those around the world who are here with us. 
We heard from your word written in a country on the other side of the world by your spirit telling us, encouraging us, equipping us. And God, we're living this day and this year, 2021, during this time. And we say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And we say, we see you. Help us to walk in the light. So God, I ask that we would be encouraged, especially those who are suffering today, that there would be encouragement knowing that you hear, you listen, you are with us, and you will redeem it all. God, we're encouraged by that, Lord Jesus. We say, come quickly this day and give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And by the way, if you're here and like, man, I don't know about this Jesus. I don't know. I haven't given my heart to Christ. Let's talk, okay? I'm going to be here. We're going to talk about this. Today could be your day, right, where you say, that's me. I want to be in him. I want to know him. I want to be found in him, giving you life giving his life for yours. I want to talk to you today as well. Amen.